Hello and welcome to yet another special episode of the Iraq Football Podcast, ladies and gents. Today we're joined by a very special talent, somebody that we haven't really seen much of in the media, but Iraqi born and bred, currently living in Sweden and playing for the Swedish under-21 team. It's Hassan Ali, all the way from Erebro. Hassan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Of course, the pleasure is always ours. Now, um, obviously, I'm your host, Hassanen Bilal, and this is a podcast that I've received a lot of requests for. When is Hassan Ali going to be on a show? Find out about Hassan Ali. So here we are, Hassan. Let's jump straight into things. Yeah. Why have you been avoiding the Iraqi media? <laughs> I'll start off with a difficult question. I know the answer, by the way, but let the fans hear. No, I, I couldn't say I have been avoiding it. It's more like... You know, it's so much when you're young, you focus to you focus so much on football and you focus on training, you focus on developing everything. And, you know, social media for me, of course, social media has become a big thing. But for me, I just uh, I don't put too much time in it. You know, I just uh, like if I post something, I post one thing, then I'm. I don't put my mind too much in the social media thing because it, when you're young, it can get in, it can get into your head pretty fast. So for me, I'm keeping it. Uh, speaking uh, speaking of being young, I, I heard today is like a special day, right? What's what's happening today? So. <laughs> yeah, it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Hassan! How old are you turning now? Twenty one, right? Twenty. Ah, oh, you're yeah. still a baby, man. Mashallah. To be fair, man, I uh, I respect your your mentality when it comes to social media and stuff. Honestly, if it wasn't for Iraqi football, I wouldn't really be on social media either. So I understand yeah. where you're coming from. Um, let's jump into football a little bit. How's your season going so far? I know the season's not really started, but talk to me about your preseason, your preparation coming up. Uh, so we started like uh, fifth, I think uh, sixth. 6th of uh, January, we started training a uh, new coach. Um, so it's been good. We've been training a lot and uh, we've had some uh, preseason games. Uh, we're developing as a team, to be honest. It's, uh, it takes a little bit of time to get into the new uh, environment and how we want to play and everything. But I think it's going to be a great year, to be honest. Uh, it feels like we have a great squad and... Uh, for me, I think it's it's a really it looks really good. Last season was very difficult for the team for a lot of reasons. Uh, you guys were in the in the the first Premier League division. Now you got relegated. Um, how has that been like for you? You know, to experience that at such a young age, you're only nineteen, it must have been tough. Uh, I would lie if it wasn't tough. It was really tough uh, mentally. Uh, it took a lot on me. It was. Uh, a hard time, of course, but the thing is with football, it's so much mentality. You have to be strong ment mentally. You have to be strong or, or football, it's it's hard to deal with. It's so much, uh, you have pressure, you have fans, you have uh, the team, you have to take your place, everything. So for me, of course, when we got relegated, it was tough, but to experience it at, a, at a, such a young age, it's even better because now I get stronger mentally and then... Uh, uh, hopefully it will help me in the future uh, like mentality wise so what were the key lessons you learned from last season you you went through all that journey long season and at the end you guys just uh, you got relegated what were the key things you take away from this I would say I learned from uh, really tough times to like keep up my work to be uh, uh, locked in to have my focus and uh, and do not let the, like, even when it goes tough, even it, when it's so hard, like when you think about it too much in trainings and everything, it's important to keep up the work because uh, every day is a new day to become better. And the career, it's, uh, what is it, uh, 15 years, inshallah, and then you have to like build on, continue growing. It's like this. I, I take it as a learning lesson and hopefully, it made me strong. Hassan, has it helped at all being uh, surrounded with uh, players like Jilwan and Ahmed Yassin, Iraqi players, same um, same country as you, same upbringing, both grown up in Sweden. Has that helped at all? 
I mean, of course, uh, for me, Jilwan and Yasin, I have a really, really good relationship with them. It's like my older brothers. Uh, they help me both off the pitch and on the pitch. Uh, especially, they have had uh, uh, two good careers. So uh, everything they say, I take it as uh, something to learn and take with me. Uh, they've been through uh, so much in their career, so they know what... Uh, what I have to take with me and what I have to not think about too much. So, yeah, of course, two really great guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's been a surprise, to be honest with you, to see them both stay at Orebro with you. So um, I'm very excited to see what happens this season. You know, um, Hopefully we continue to see uh, the three of you guys keep playing first team football together. There's been an addition of another fourth Iraq, a younger one, if I'm not mistaken. I forgot his name, though. Lucas Lemon. Tell me a little bit about him. No, this guy is a really talented young guy. He's, I think he will become a great player. He has a, a, like a maturity in his, in his way of playing. It's like he's older than he is. He's calm. And both on and off the field, uh, on and off the field, he's like uh, mature. He don't talk too much. He's like... It's like his mind is 28 and he's 19, so it's... No, is, he, is he currently playing with the first team or is he with the, the younger lot? No, he's playing with the first team. He's, okay, so four Arafis in one squad. Yeah, and so we have like, the Amir Razak. He's also a Iraqi guy, so the wait, physical the, coach. The Arafi takeover now is official. <laughs> 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 All right, so tell me a little bit about like um, what you know about the Arafi national team. Do you watch games? Do you follow the team, etc.? Of course, uh, I watch uh, a lot of uh, games from the national team. And uh, what have you I made about our recent form? It's not been good. What have you thought about the games and the performances? Yeah, it's uh, maybe. I think for me, it's gonna be, become uh, a lot better. They have some talented new guys that's coming in. They have a, I think, a really great future. And. Uh, uh, of course, with the young talent that's coming in, the older guys that's, uh, have, uh, that have a lot of experience, I think uh, it's going to be a great squad. In the future, inshallah, it's, it's becoming better and better. Um, there's a lot of players that come from Sweden and that are Iraqi. I want to ask you this. What is it about Sweden that produces this much Iraqi talent? Like, we don't see this in other countries. Why is it only in Sweden? I swear I don't have the the answer to that question, but I think we have we have some great talents to be honest. It's uh, I don't know, but <laughs> I swear that I don't have an answer to this question. But we have a lot of uh, great players. Who, who do you know? Play. Who do you know from these players, like on a personal level? You've seen them. You've played with them regularly. Like I, I'm Marsher. I know yeah. this guy. I know Ahmed Jilwan. I have like uh, do I have more? It's pretty many. I know, like I've played against uh, Amir Al Amari. I played uh, played against uh, Mohana Jaz, mm. uh, Kevin Yakub. Every those players I've been uh, I've played against them. What What do you think of uh, Kevin Yakub uh, recently? At least the rumors are that he wants to play for Iraq now. He's deciding that he's no longer going to represent Sweden and he wants to play for the Iraq national team. What did you make of this, Kevin Yakub? I. Uh, the, the when we played against him, I think he's a really talented guy. This uh, this guy can become really good. He's uh, he's young, but he's also so uh, talented and mature in his way of playing. Also, so I think he will become a great player. And it's really nice for him to, uh, and I think he's proud of playing for them for Iraq. For Swedish players, and this is why I kind of um, relate to you guys a little bit. I know what it's like growing up outside of Iraq. You know, I grew up, I was born in London, grew up in London, and I know the, the difficulties that happen when you're kind of, you're from two countries, but for me, not really. I've always been Iraqi, but when I go to Iraq, I'm seen as an outside, outsider. Mm. In London, I'm seen as Iraqi, I'm not English. Mm. So it's a bit of a kind of, um, it's a bit of an odd situation. Yeah. For you growing up, in um in Sweden and being an Iraqi, how have you found this? To be like uh, from, uh, you mean both? Yeah, so like being an Iraqi, but you live in Sweden. How have you found this experience? Like 
How would you explain this to somebody that's only lived in Iraq and only been born in Iraq and stayed there their whole life? Well, it's a normal experience for me. It's I don't know. It's hard for me to uh, to say like it's it's normal. I'm a uh, uh, Iraqi guy. I'm a, a Swedish guy. I'm born in Sweden, but I'm Iraqi. My father is Iraqi. My mother she is uh, from Palestine and Syria. So it's a mix, but I'm a proud Iraqi guy, of course. And uh, there is nothing uh, to, how do you say, like, I, it's, an, it's, it's a normal... Uh... The, reason, the reason I ask is because um, I feel like a lot of these players that grew up in Sweden and abroad, uh, some Iraqi fans struggle to understand why these players want to play for Sweden or play for this particular country. I know Zidane Akbal, even though he wanted to play for Iraq this whole time, he still received so many messages saying, oh, uh, he only wants to play for England, et cetera, et cetera. Iraqi fans, some of them, at least not all of them, they struggle to understand why a player would want to play for Sweden or England or whatever. How would you explain this feeling to them as to why a player would want to play for Sweden? For me, I'm... Um... Of course, it's a pride to play uh, for Iraq, and it's a pride to to represent uh, Iraq as a country, and it's a pride for me to also represent Sweden as a country. Uh, uh, there is like it's hard to explain what, but it's like, of course, Iraq is in my heart. It's uh, my fa uh, my father's from Iraq. I'm from Iraq. It's uh, it's a big. It takes. It's a big. Uh, how do you say like uh, I feel proud every time when I see like the Iraqi national team and everything so there I don't have like this spe specific answer to this question it's more like uh, when the time comes when it's when I feel I'm ready then uh, then inshallah in the future now I have to like I said with the the passport and things I have to fix, and then we, it's, we'll see what happens in the future. Yeah. So you haven't made the firm decision right now as of to uh, whether you want to play for Iraq or Sweden. Right now, you're just you're playing for the Swedish youth team, and you're just seeing how that goes. Right now, I'm thinking only about the club. Right now, it's my focus in this preseason and and uh, uh, working from there. I take it day for day and uh, let. Uh, let it come as it comes, you understand? For me, of course, uh, every time I see uh, the Swedish national team, I'm always, uh, uh, of course, it's, uh, I'm, how do you say, fakhur. Yeah, I'm fakhur to be yeah. both oh. Swedish and Iraqi. Yeah. Every time I see Iraq play, I'm really, uh, like, uh, I'm the biggest fan, you understand? It's, it's yes. uh, a hard question to answer on, but I'm really... I don't know what to say there. We both. No, nah, it's okay. Like for me, um, what I want to get to the fans to understand really is that it's not it's not as clear cut as saying, "Oh, I want to play for Sweden," and I, that means I don't want to play for Iraq. Or if I want to play for Iraq, that means I'm disrespecting Sweden. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important for fans to understand that there's there's a lot of in between uh, when it comes to making these decisions. There's a lot of factors that need to be considered, etc. And there's a lot of pressure on uh, young players like you. And now I'm not just talking about Hassan Ali here. I'm talking about other players that are growing up in Sweden. Uh, Eamon Shah, for example. A um, few of the other younger guys now. Like I understand why these players might not want to play for Iraq at this present time. You know, you look at players like Jinwan. Shout out to Jinwan. Thank you for giving me the shirt. Um, <laughs> these players, they, they took a while before they were committed to playing for Iraq. And um, there's a lot of factors that come into play here. And I think as fans, we need to be patient. We need to give players this time to make these decisions. And when they're ready to play for Iraq, if they want to play for Iraq, then, yeah. then they decide. But I, th I think, yeah, for me, this is just a very important part that I, I want fans to get to know. What, what yeah. do you think about this? For, uh, like you said, it's almost... Uh, it's. Uh... It's hard to say why the decision comes. I think the decision comes when you're mentally ready, when you're ready to to make your decision 100%. Uh, 
right now when you're in the younger ages you only think about okay my next step what is my next step to become better as a footballer right now in my mind i'm thinking only about what do i have to do on the pitch to become better i i'm my my thoughts is not too much on whether iraq whether sweden where this i'm here now i think about okay i'm want to present the best to say in in my club then what happens in the future it will come like if it comes tomorrow or in one year or two years three years i don't know but the thing is right now i'm thinking about what to do tomorrow today the next day to become better as a player that's the most important so what would you say is your main objective for this season? Like this season going forward, what would you say like you, you've set as like goals? One, two, three. What would you say are your goals? To... At club level. Yeah, I, I want to become, first of all, I want to become a better player. It's, it sounds like, yeah, but of course, defensively, offensively, I want to become uh, a lot better because I have uh, this mindset. I want to always... Uh, grow as a player like uh, ability wise and then uh, i also want to uh, do more assists of course you want to do your assists you want to do your goals and then i want to win the league this league you now this yes, is them sure yeah. how, how many assists did you get last season just out of curiosity <laughs> i got two i think but uh, i had one i do, did a cross and then they scored an own goal so i count <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah man like, like, it sounds like you have your head screwed on you know what you want and now you just need to work towards it so all the best man i just remembered by the way um i think it was two and a half years ago i was sat down in a cafe with yasser qasim who's your former teammate yeah, yeah, and I asked him about you. I was like, "How good is is, is uh, Hassan Ali?" And he, you know what? Fair play to him. He said he's very, very good. Um, he and did. He goes, yeah, he did. He did. He said, uh, "Look out for this kid. He's going to be amazing in the future." So, sure. inshallah, yeah, man. But it shows you that there's there's players out there, big experienced players like Jilwan, like Ahmed Yassin, like Yasser Qasim. These guys, they rate you. So, I mean, mashallah, you're clearly doing something right. And for me, like as an Iraqi fan, I really hope to see with the Iraqi team. But you know. Uh, at the end of the day, as a as a Iraqi fan and um, as your friend, as essentially, I always want what's best for you guys uh, and what's best for you. So I think as, as Iraqi fans, we have to respect these players and respect their decisions and not take it personally. You know, if a player decides he doesn't want to play for Iraq, this is the player's decision. You know, you can't hold this against them. It doesn't make them any less of a human being. And we should always be happy for any Iraqi that does well in my books anyway. Hi, inshallah, um, inshallah. Thank you so much. But uh, inshallah, you, as I said, you don't know what the future holds. I'm a proud, proud Iraqi guy. Uh, of course, it's uh, as I said to you. It's uh, how do you say it? I'm uh, proud. I'm proud every time I see uh, Iraq plays. It's uh, my father always talks about Iraq. It's uh, like for me, my father when it's Iraq on the TV, it's like the biggest, like, don't talk to me. You understand? It's like, <laughs> I'm focusing on this game. So no, for me, I'm a big fan. And uh, inshallah, as I, as I said, in the future, you don't know what comes. Uh, and right now my focus in, is in the league and to becoming better, of keeping course. myself humble, <laughs> inshallah. Yeah, yeah, but um, you have the right mindset, bro, and I respect this a lot, man. Like, it's not many 20-year-olds that have this idea of just continuously looking to improve despite everything. So, well done on this. Um, what have you made of, like, the Iraqi fans on social media and all the love and support they give you, even though you're still young and you haven't really played for Iraq or anything like that? What have you made of the Iraqi fans in general? MashaAllah, I have to just say, MashaAllah, it's, it's, wow, the... <clears throat> Like as I've seen, it's it's a really great atmosphere. I I can imagine in uh, when Iraq plays because I see these uh, guys. The social media, it's uh, like I've seen some players. They've played a few games, but then boom, their Instagram is <laughs> is flying. <laughs> so no, I it's really I'm honored to have this support from them. It's, uh, they're great. Yeah, Iraqi fans really are special, man. They have so much yeah. passion for the national team and they love the exactly. thing. Yeah, really. They have uh, such a big passion. So, 
to kind of bring things to a kind of end, what would you like to say to Arab fans um, just in general for like all the support they've shown you and like just getting them to know you a little bit? What, what would you what do you want them to know about Hassan Ali? That I'm a, I'm a guy that uh, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but I like I like to keep my foot on the like not flying. Yeah, grounded, yeah. Yeah, foot on the ground, humble. I'm working day in day out. Uh, thinking more about what's coming next than too much in the future yeah. and uh, of course their support is always uh, amazing so uh, inshallah we'll see what the future holds uh, and uh, I want to say thank you to those uh, Iraqi fans that support you of course of course um, Hassan, thank you so much for your time. It's been amazing speaking to you, getting to know you a little bit. And um, hopefully this is the first of many, many um, uh, times we have you on the podcast. I yeah. uh, just want to say also happy birthday once more. Good luck this coming season. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing those assists going up, hopefully. And <laughs> you guys winning winning the league. And um, maybe, maybe I'll see you soon in Oribro if I could get myself down to Sweden. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much, Hassan. Uh, for the listeners, guys, very quickly, if you want to find me, uh, find me on um, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Arab Football Pod. Just a small update on the Ali Al Hamadi interview we did recently, um, whose birthday is also today, same as Hassan Ali. <laughs> Happy birthday to both of them. Uh, there's been a little delay because of issues with the Arab FA in terms of me releasing it. It will be released. Just, I'm not sure when, bear with me, it will come out. But anyway, thank you so much to Hussein and to the Iraqi fans. Yalla Iraq.